Today we're going to re-sign the uh, driver from Altair for the USB blaster so that it will install on uh, more recent Windows versions that have driver signing enforced. So the original driver, uh, as you see here, I've plugged in my USB blaster, removed my own version of the driver. Um, the original drivers for this from Altera. So if I browse and I install the driver software, you'll see that the uh, hash for the file is not present in the specified catalog file. So the driver has been signed, but they have modified the driver after it was signed. So it will not install on Windows 10 and I think Windows 8 and probably Windows 7 64 bit. Um, so what we're going to do today is take the existing driver and um, create a driver that will install so we can use the USB blaster. So to do that, you're going to need Visual Studio 2015 Community Edition, which you can get from Microsoft for free. It's a completely free tool and uh, you should probably have it because it does make writing programs much easier. You'll also need the Windows 10 SDK and the Windows 10 driver kit both of which are available as free downloads from Microsoft. So once you've got all three of those installed, start off with Visual Studio, then install the Windows 10 SDK, then install the Windows 10 driver kit. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create a new project and we will create a Visual C++ Windows driver uh, which one was it now? WDF? No, no, no. Ah, that one. Package. Win USB inf driver package. And we call this USB blaster driver. So, what this does is creates a So we have our driver files, which is just mydriver.inf. That's the only thing that this driver has. Now I'm going to do a release on x64, just because I am on Windows 64. I could probably do a debug build. It doesn't really matter. So if I build this, I don't, if I remember right, it doesn't build out of the box, which yes, which is just silly, but that's what it does. So there are no errors to build. No, it didn't build, but there are no errors. Of course not. Ah, there we go. Unsupported property. So we change the driver settings V10. We want, I'm going to go for Windows 10 or higher because I'm in Windows 10. I'm actually, no, I'll pick Windows 7. We'll start off with Windows 7 and see if that installs on my machine. So we'll apply that. Okay, and build it again. Okay, these are just from the driver int file that is there. So this is the one that we create, but we don't really care about that. What we want to do, so I'm going to edit this with Notepad++, which of course starts off on a different monitor. Just let me uh, drag that over. I'll close all my other windows as well. And I shall drag this. Oh God, I had too many windows open in Notepad++. I should probably edit this bit out. But knowing me, I won't. Anyway, so this is the Altera driver in file. So we're just going to select it all and copy it all and go back into our control A to select it all, paste that over the top of it. So now our in file is exactly the same as the Altera in file. And we're also going to copy the name and, and thank you paste over that so we get the same in file name as the original we want to basically duplicate the original so we're going to build that driver and it couldn't sign it because all these files are not there so what we have to do is take the x64 and the x32 we could probably cut this down so it's only a 64 or 32 bit driver as you needed but for now I shall uh, just do it the way they have it. So we're going to go into our project directory, which is in Visual Studio Projects. And you can see I've got a USB blaster driver, which is the one I tested. USB blaster. Now, 
we're going to create a new folder new folder driver uh, dlls uh, we're going to paste our driver files that came with the original Altera driver into there. Now what we're going to do is tell the driver that it needs those. So that is in package files. And uh, we don't need that anymore. So what we do need is uh, of course it starts off in my uh, blah, 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 blah. right so we'll go back to our project visual studio 2015 projects usb blaster driver usb blaster driver dlls open oh it's not gonna let me pick them all so if we open those and then we're going to add in uh, of course it goes back to there why wouldn't it remember? I don't know, but it doesn't. So, that one, USB Blaster, driver DLLs, x64, and add those ones. So what I want to do is change that so that's a local path. So that would be dot slash. And I'm gonna paste that in for them all. So I'm going to take out uh, that and just that's a dot so you can see what I'm doing is I'm setting it to a relative path rather than absolute path I don't need to do this quite clearly because the path is hard-coded and it's hard-coded for where the file is on my machine it's absolutely grand but if I were to distribute this package or the project sorry as a uh, package put it up in github or whatever which I may very well do actually know that the thought has occurred but I want it to be able to compile on anyone's, uh, anyone else's machine without me needing to, or without them needing to go in and edit these files. So uh, now the path we need is, um, I don't know if I need the full path. I shall do this and see if that works. I um, can't remember exactly what I needed, but this looks right. I don't know if I need the file name or just the directory. So we shall test this and see how it goes. And hopefully if I apply, okay, well, let's build the driver again. Uh, yes, I want to reload it. And what does it say? Uh, to the inf. So if I inf driver DLL, so the path is right, I believe. So let's try the output path. probably should have double checked this bit before I started of course I could just edit it this bit out so I don't look like a total idiot but that's no fun idiocy is fun eh? Considering using the destination folder. What the hell is the destination folder? Oops.
Could not copy the file. Driver DLLs X32 USB to the destination file. That. Why are you copying that to a directory? Oh, maybe I need to clean it. Ah, that's probably what it is. So let's clean that. And. No, let's clean them both because I only cleaned one. No, I didn't. I cleaned the output. That's fine. Okay, so build. Build solution. Okay, there we go. So we now have a lovely release built driver. Actually, that's the wrong folder. You idiot. There we go. So this, as you will see, or as you may remember, actually, that's just, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Where am I going? Where am I going? Open a new window. That's the one. Altera. Quartus drivers USB blaster. So you'll see we have virtually the same stuff. We don't have the license, we don't care. That's FTDI's license, not Altera's. So you see we've got our inf, our cat, and our that. But if we go to install this driver, um, update driver software, browse. This will not install either because the driver isn't signed so this is a different error the driver isn't signed so what we need to do now is sign the driver using our own signing so sign mode production no sign mode yeah we'll stay test sign we'll uh, create a test certificate so this creates a certificate effectively that we can use for testing we're not actually going to test it but we're going to just use it so so now our, let's just check that our driver has in fact been signed digital signatures yes so this has signed it so now we're going to try and install this it won't install again because we haven't actually see it's signed but Problem is our driver certificate is not in our driver store. So I shall this is the certificate manager for the local computer. So what we want to do is inside the trusted root certificate authorities certificates, we right click and all tasks and import next file name. We want that path. And browse and we want that certificate the import was successful so we refresh that and there it is you see on today we have a lovely certificate which now means because our certificate is installed we can update the driver software again with our driver and we always want to trust our and there we have our Altera USB blaster fully installed and full ready to use. So that is a quick workaround or dirty hack depending on your point of view. But essentially this method will allow you to re-sign any driver uh, for older hardware that will not install on later versions of Windows because the original driver signing was effectively done wrong so i hope this video helps you um if it does feel free to like the video leave comments about how big an idiot i am and well we'll see how we get on from there okay thank you very much for watching until next time